another great day to sew something wonderful. I'm Kia with Kia B, and this is Kinley with Kinley DeBoer, and we are so excited to bring you a collab today. So over on Kinley's channel, we did a um, tree watercolor painting. Mm -hmm. Mine, I felt like, turned out like the Jolly Green Giant. No, it didn't. <laughs> Kinley's turned out super cute. And so um, head on over to her channel and check that out. Today I am teaching Kinley how to make a really cute striped stocking. This is adorable. So we did the top and I'm going to do a video in um, just a bit on how to finish the stocking so that you can do it in different ways. Mm -hmm. So are you excited? Yes. Yes. It wasn't that bad, was it? No. No. Hi guys, we are at the quilt store. I brought Kinley with me and we are gonna let her pick out some Christmas fabric for her stocking and um, just kind of show her the ropes of a quilt store. She's pretty excited about coming. Yeah. So let's head inside and take a look at some fabric. Um, and so we are so excited. So let's uh, come in a little closer and we will show you how, what to do. Our very first step is that you need two and a half inch strips. This is so good if you have leftover jelly roll strips laying around or if you have a full jelly roll, you can make so many stockings out of it. With we, um, Kinley went to the quilt shop with me today and we got a little bit of footage from that, but she picked out eight different fabrics from the vintage holiday line with Bonnie and Camille for Moda. And um, so she's cut each of those down into uh, two and a half inch strips. And I thought that was really handy. We got an eighth of a yard of each of them, so a full yard of fabric. And I think you can get about six stockings made with eight, with eight one eighth inch, um, one eighth of a yard of fabric. We have lots and lots of leftover. So yeah, you can see we just have like a ton of leftover. So we are just today gonna focus on one stocking. So we have cut them down. So if you want to arrange them, how did okay. you have them arranged again for your stocking? This one was on top, then that one, then that one, then that one. Let's get these down. Yep, and then it was this one. Okay, perfect. So this is kind of um, taking some shape. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, okay, so sense. you need, with eight strips, okay. and they could be um, reprints. I yep. mean, you could have two of the same print. Um, with this, what you wanna make sure is that you have five pieces that are two and a half by eight and a half, and then three pieces that are two and a half by 12 and a half, and that will give you your nice um, boot toe here. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show Kinley how to do is sew these strips together with a quarter inch seam. And um, we're just gonna start from the top and go all the way to the bottom. We're gonna sew them all and then press them at the end. We're not gonna sew, press, sew, press. Um, since she, this is her first time using a quilting, doing a quilting project, I wanna try and streamline things for her. So we're gonna start that. So um, what I want you to do is just leave this set right okay. here. And um, I'm actually gonna change out my foot to be a quarter of an inch foot. Right now I have a walking foot on and that will come in really handy when you go to quilt your, um, your stocking top. So, all right. I am loving my new Juki machine. It is awesome. I have made so many different things on it and everybody's comments on our video was so kind and sweet. Um, I'm having a really, Good time using this machine, I like it a lot. All right, so I'm just gonna switch here to our quarter inch foot, really simple. What you're gonna do, I'll show you the first one. Okay. You're gonna layer your first two pieces. Okay. You're gonna match up your ends here, like that, right. okay? You're gonna sew all the way like this. What will help you here at the beginning is if you do have a couple of pins. Yes. And so I've got some right here. And you'll just maybe use two or three and pin these together like this. We put it in and back through. Yep. Maybe one in the middle and one on the other end. Like this. And you've used the sewing machine before, yes? Yes. We talked a little bit about that at the quilt store. Okay, and this is a quarter inch foot. Now we're not gonna worry about a scant quarter inch today because um, I want you to have 
you know, as much as you can do. So this is a quarter inch foot, meaning the distance from the needle to the edge of this foot is a quarter of an inch. Okay. So you're going to line up your fabric to the edge of the, um, the edge of the foot, just like this. So when okay. you put it down, do you see how this yes. is lined up right here? Yes. I know that's hard for our viewers to see, but, um, we're just lining it up with the edge of the foot and you're just going to take a quarter inch seam. And if you go pretty slow here, Take a pin out and keep going like this. We're gonna go all the way down. And the feed dogs themselves pull the fabric through so you don't really have to worry. You just have to make sure it keeps it straight. And pull this one out. And that's our last one. Okay, so here's our first piece. And it just opens up like this. Oh, that's pretty. Yes. So now what you'll do, you'll take your third piece and mm -hmm. you're going to line it up this way and you want to make sure everything lines up here nice and straight I would get the corner lined up okay. throw a pin in it like this then get this edge and you never want to pull on your fabric because you can okay. distort it so you're just going to do this and then make sure your corners line up here there you go the reason I say we're not going to worry about a scant quarter inch today is because we're not actually following any measurements other yeah. than the one that I wrote. And so it's not going to matter that it doesn't line up perfectly. Okay. A scant quarter inch takes in to consideration that the fold of the fabric, because believe it or not, that fold actually takes away some of the, um, some of the measurement. Okay. So what I'm going to do is lower our stitch length here and go over this little bit just one more time so it does not come apart. Okay, so then now you're ready to go to sew on this okay. guy. Okay, so I'll scoot over and let you do that. Okay, your presser foot is down there on the floor. Okay. Make sure you only press on this blue, like on the top. Okay. If you push on the back, it's going to cut your thread for you. Okay. And then this is your... You actually don't have to do that. So basically, that you, one. yep, you pulled this down. Okay. And that's how you know how to line it up. There we go. We're good. Okay. And then you just start going. Wow, it's like really close to pressure. Like it. Yeah. Sensitive to pressure. Yes, it is. Maybe because I'm moving my foot. Moving it. Okay, perfect. So now what you want to do is push on the back of the foot pedal. Okay, and lift your presser foot up, and there you go. That's now nice. you can open that up and then use, um, keep going with your next okay. piece. Yep. So then pins. I'll Take these line out up. Away. So it lines up like this? Mm hmm. Okay. Yep, just like that. A tip if you were sewing really, really long strips mm -hmm. together. Um, one of the tips is that you want to start at one end yes. and then the next strip you would start at the other end. Okay. Um, but so for that these that just... are shorter, it, because they tend to bow Yeah. if you don't do that, but for shorter strips it really doesn't matter all that much. You can pretty okay. well stay straight. There are certain side that you use that you start that side or this side. So that's what I was saying. With longer strips, you would want to start, you know, different sides oh, each time, alternating sides. But with these, you don't have to. Okay.
So now nice. lift your presser foot up. I know it's it's That's one of like, my new favorite things. That's so so nice. Like. But if it doesn't cut, you have like the little blade thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. That that's what Grandma's has, so it's really nice. So now that you're on the longer pieces, yep, you wanna line this up and you're gonna line it up with actually these corners touching each other. Yep, just, yes, just like that. Okay. And now you're going to throw a pin in right here at the end. Okay. There you go. We'll throw a pin right there. Okay. And then you can go ahead and lift it up. Okay. And now what you wanna do is just pin um, in the middle into this corner. Okay. And just know that this is excess that's gonna yeah. hang off. Okay. So now I do all the way to the end. Yes. But the next two strips you'll do mm -hmm. all the way to the end. Done. This looks so good. Okay, we are actually done with our cutting mat for okay. this moment. So we're gonna scoot that out of the way. And if you will hold that, I'm gonna bring my well-loved ironing pressing board here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set all of our seams. So what that means is as soon as our iron is hot, we're gonna come, and there's a difference between ironing and pressing. Ironing is like you would iron regular clothes. Mm -hmm. It's taking and moving your iron back and forth, but actually that can distort fabric, and so you wanna press it, so you're gonna take the iron and press it down, lift up, press it down, lift okay. up. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna push all of your seams down, and what that okay. means is you're gonna push it this way so that when we flip over, all of these folds will be pointing ah, downwards just like this. So um, we are just waiting for our, so what I would do, I would go ahead and let's just press um, setting the seams. That just means setting that thread where it's at. We're gonna do that to all of the folds and then um, we will be ready to go. So you can actually pull that iron very carefully off its base. And then yeah, you just press along there. And what I would do, yep, turn it sideways just like that. There you go. And then just hold for a Yep, second. for just a second. It doesn't even take that long. Yep, just like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip that and you can continue right there. I think after a while, a while quilters don't feel the heat of irons anymore. We just grab it, <laughs> like it's not even hot. <laughs> so now what I do, this is, this is what I'm gonna do, or have you do. Okay. I'm gonna have you press from the back and that way we make sure that the seams are all going the right direction. Okay. And in order to do that, if you'll hand me the iron, I'll show you. We are gonna start at the very top here and we're just gonna tug lightly. Okay. And we're gonna press over that seam. We're just gonna do a light press and then we'll flip it over and press it from the other side okay. the correct way. But this just gets our seams to know this is the way we want you to go, so when you turn it over, they yes. don't try and go the other direction. That makes sense. So we've got this, and then we'll scoot this up. And this guy, we're just gonna kind of allow him to fold over this okay. way. Um, when it gets quilted, he will lay down on its own. So we've got this. Okay, so now we wanna let our iron on back on its base to charge. And now when we flip it over, 
Now all the seams are laying the correct direction, so we okay. just want to take our fingers and do it over this way. Okay. And you're going to go back and press, just like you were setting your seams, you're going to go back and press on top of that. There you go. And this is the point where you could add starch if you were wanting okay. to. Um, you could really do anything with this at this point. Yep, pull it forward. There you go. This is going to be such a cute little stocking. Mm -hmm. I like the stripes. Yes. Perfect. Okay, so return that to its base. And that's really all you do for the quilt top. Thank you so much for joining us in the hive today. I had a really good time teaching Kinley how to make the top to a Christmas stocking. I don't, I think it was painless, maybe. <laughs> it was fine. I didn't burn myself and I didn't cut myself. Really there you good. go. <laughs> so this was Jolly Roll friendly. Um, my whole family got charm pack friendly stockings and I can kind of show you in our later, vi later video on how to finish those stockings and different variations that you can do. And so I thought this was really, really fun. Make sure that y'all head over to her channel. She is super talented. And how old are you? I'm 14. She's 14, guys. That is insane to me. And she is so, so good. <laughs> so you. check her out on her YouTube channel at Kinley DeBoer. We will link everything down below. And also check out her Instagram and her Etsy shop. Yep. She is doing so, so well. So thank y'all so much for joining us in the hive today. And y'all have a great day. Mm -hmm.